we got our first It's time for Dumb Money Decisions with your host, Tyrone Keys. Tonight's episode is brought to you by pizza. Even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. It would not be right if I put the focus on someone else for this inaugural episode of Dumb Money Decisions. So the first episode is going to focus on me and one of the dumbest financial decisions that I ever made. And I've made a few, so a lot of these episodes will end up being about me. Uh, But I learned from it. That's the key. So we're going to go over the dumb money move I made, and we're going to go over the way that I fixed it and never made that dumb decision again. The year was 1993, and I was a sophomore in college. I was pretty popular on campus among the faculty and the student body. I dated one of the most attractive women at the school, and I had a solid 3.7 GPA. I was loving life. One of the reasons I was popular had to do with the fact that I had a work-study job at the Department of Student Activities. So this put me in the middle of every cool thing that happened on campus. I even had an opportunity to meet Bishop Desmond Tutu. Anyway, the director of the department allowed me and my buddy Tim to sell concessions at all school functions. You wouldn't believe, or maybe you would, the amount of money you can make selling soda and salty snacks to college students at concerts and sporting events. So there's this one instance where we had a concert at the school a grand poobah was the headliner. He was a rapper and he had been a part of the rap group Brand Nubian. And he went out on a solo career, had a good career. Anyway, he comes to the school to do a concert. The director of student activities, he brings this guy over to meet with us at our stand. So Tim and I, we're like the last people on earth to be starstruck. So we're cordial, we're polite, professional, but we are not overwhelmed by this guy's presence. Okay. We had concessions to sell, money to make. Anyway, the director says, hey, Ty, Tim, why don't you hook these guys up with some snacks? Now, where I come from, hookup is synonymous with free. This guy had his entire entourage with him. And the director, he's expecting me and Tim, two struggling college students, to give free food to a rapper? Yeah, right. So look, we took everyone's order and Tim said that'll be $14.83. The rapper, Grand Poobah, he then says, I left my wallet upstairs. They had a green room for him upstairs. So I actually started to put the stuff back. And the director takes out his wallet and he starts, you know, putting bills on the counter, paying for it. And he looks at us crazy like, you know, we actually, you guys actually expect to get paid? So we weren't giving free stuff to a guy that was making thousands of dollars that night for a couple of hours on stage. So that's how I was rolling in college. Good times. I mean, great times. But guess what? Storm clouds were gathering on the horizon. Those storm clouds that came in the form of the credit card companies who set up shop in the student center one day. And look, let me be clear, okay? They did provide a lot of paperwork with the card, with the application, and then with the card when the card came in the mail. Guess what? I didn't read it. So this is not bashing credit card companies because if used correctly, credit is a very powerful tool. So I just want to preface the rest of this with that. Remember, this is a dumb money move that was made by me not the credit card companies. Well, maybe they did make a dumb move considering that I couldn't pay them back as a broke college student. But anyway, so there I am. I'm, I've got these uh, credit cards and I got the MasterCard next, which was a thousand dollar limit. And when I got the cards, what I did was I put them up and I only spent on the things that I absolutely needed. And then I always paid the cards off in full within 30 days. You know what I did. I did what most economic illiterates do when they get credit. So the movie Boomerang 
had come out the previous year and it had starred Eddie Murphy. And this was like at the height of Eddie's fame. And, you know, there was a scene where Eddie, he wore this red sports jacket. And I thought that the jacket looked so cool on him. And it did. It looked cool on Eddie Murphy. I thought it would be cool if I went and owned a jacket like that. Now, never mind the fact that, again, I'm a broke college student. And I really didn't have anywhere to go that would require a funky red sports jacket. So I didn't care. Who cared? You know, I got credit and I did it. Not only did I do it, I figured, why stop at the jacket? I've got $1,500 of credit here and I can afford an entire $100 imported nylon red suit. So that's what I did. I took it directly from the store to the neighborhood dry cleaner to get it tailored. And that cost me another $25, which I promptly charged. Now I had bought shoes and the whole nine yards. Boom! Threw the credit card down on the uh, counter at the dry cleaner. And I should have known that something was wrong. I was on the wrong track here because when the guy took the suit, he looked at it and he, he seemed to be trying to suppress a laugh. One week later, I picked up the suit and the next day was Friday. I had two classes. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to wear a fire engine red suit to class. So Fridays were a light day on campus and my class started at 8 a.m. A fire engine red suit to class at 8 a.m. So, you know, God looks out for babies and fools. And in his infinite wisdom, he saw to it that the eight o'clock class was canceled. This was divine intervention. But this is pre-cell phone day. So I didn't realize the class was canceled until I got to the campus in the red suit. Now, my next class wasn't until 10. So I figured I'd try to find some of my friends and I knew that they would all be impressed by my style. So as I'm walking toward the student center, I see one of my professors. He's walking out, Dr. Crosby. And he stops cold. And he's looking in my direction. And I can see he's got this quizzical look on his face. And he's squinting like he's trying to figure out what's going on. And then he just busts out laughing. Now, what made this really crazy was that this is a man who probably wore a three-piece suit to bed. I mean, he was always just, you know, the epitome of an erudite professor, well-dressed, impeccable. This was a black guy with a British accent, okay? The epitome of class and poise. He is laughing uncontrollably. So I walk over, and I'm curious, and I, I ask him, I say, Hey, Dr. Crosby, what's the joke? And at this point, he's crying real tears. And he manages to say, you. And so he's laughing and laughing. And then he composes himself long enough to say, and I'll never forget this, son, go home immediately and burn that outfit before anyone else sees you in it. I was so dejected. I literally slithered away. And I started to have this feeling like I got really sub, uh, self-conscious. I started to feel like everyone was looking at me. Thus began the walk of shame back home. Six blocks that felt like six miles. And I imagined everyone who saw me pointing, laughing. I wanted to run, but I had on the cheap shoes that I bought. They were patent leather. Yeah, they were patent leather. So, and yeah, I bought those on credit and they were slippery. So I, I hey, if I would fallen in a red suit after running down the street, I would have had to move to a secluded Inuit village and stay there for the next 25 years. So I finally arrived home. I took off the suit and I literally threw it in the trash. Alas, I was not Eddie Murphy. <laughs> So in the end, I racked up $175 and change in charges on literal crap. And remember, I was working for $4.30 an hour. So it was going to take me 40 hours to pay for that clown suit. 
And that's if I paid it off right away, which I wasn't able to do because I didn't have any money like that. So I ended up paying around $250 in total when you add up the interest for a clown suit that I only wore once. I paid for comedy, but not the type of comedy where people laugh with you, the type where people laugh at you. So the moral of the story is this. Don't borrow money for consumption. When you use credit, you're borrowing money. Also, be disciplined and pay balances before they start accruing interest. When that happens, it makes whatever you purchased even more expensive when you wait and just pay the minimum. Now, there are instances in which you will borrow to purchase appreciating income producing assets. The red suit was anything but an asset. It turned into one hell of a liability. If it had been a Monday rather than a Friday. We're always on the lookout for smart professionals as we grow our financial services footprint across the U.S. and Canada. If you have a passion for all things personal finance and a desire to help people understand how to make their money work for them, we want to hear from you. We'd like to show you how you can start your financial services business by partnering with some of the most reputable names in the industry, including Nationwide, Agon, Pacific Life, and many others. If you've ever considered investing in yourself, by starting your own business, I want you to know that the best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago. The second best time is right now. Contact us using the email address in the link below. Let's talk about the future.